Heavy steps, ragged breathing. There isn't much time left. Might already be too late. The labyrinthine pathways of arbitrary sharp turns seemed stranger and stranger as panic blotted out the once deeply ingrained memories that usually guided me. Every corner felt a stranger, every straight line too long. The bell tolls for me. I bit down harder at the last of my rations held only by the skin of my teeth. It barely hung on as I kept frantically looking around, hoping for the few scraps of burning memory of mine to find a familiar sight that would lead me to salvation. The gates must be closing by now. The last few barely making it. The rest of us never stood a chance. Suddenly from a blind spot a figure struck me. There was no time to react before I came crashing down onto the cold hard ground. I struggled to regain my senses to at least see what fate would befall me in my final moments. But even in this abyss of endless terror, my mind could never have imagined the horror I had witnessed. Ah, it stings. Are you okay? Well, I just got knocked over by some blind by choice asshole who gave my skirt a decorative dirt coating, so all in all, fucking fantastic. I prefer to not be on the ground right now. Sorry about being rude like that, I'm just really frustrated that I'm not only late for school, but also managed to get lost on the way there. Though by the looks of it, you're pretty much in the same boat, and by a stroke of once-in-a-lifetime luck, you just so happen to bump into the prettiest girl in town. So how about you lead the way and get both of us out of this jam? Uh, I'm actually lost too. Ugh, just my luck! Though, in retrospect, I guess you wouldn't be here with me right now if you weren't lost as well. Oh well, no point in crying over spilled blood. We might as well wait for another student to come by and follow them instead. I'm Mirage. Don't bother telling me your name, though, I don't really care. Could do with being a bit nicer to people you've only just met. Yeah, well you could do with a beatdown, so fuck off. Oh yes, you're right. I don't really care about what you or anyone else thinks of me, so I'm not interested in trying to be nice so you'll be in a good mood. Why not? If we're both stuck in here together anyway, what's the point of making it worse for both of us? What's the point of making it better? What's the point of even bothering to care? Well, what's the point of anything at all? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I mean, really, take a moment to think about it. The human mind, in its complete vastness, is capable of recognizing its utter helplessness and uselessness in the face of inevitable and unavoidable non-existence, but is incapable of coming to terms with it. We can only ever ignore it, hide from it, or temporarily escape from it, but the fact is that we are bound to the way of all things. Death is unavoidable, not only to us but all that exists, or ever has existed. Every living being will eventually die out. Every speck of matter will eventually wither away and dissipate into entropy. It doesn't matter if you lived a good life, or if you left a legacy behind. It doesn't matter if humanity survives for a thousand years, or dies out tomorrow. The end result is the same. The absolute nothing. Human intelligence is far beyond that of other animals, but you would be misguided to consider that a gift. All other beings have the gift of ignorance, of not understanding what we do. Our intelligence is not a gift. It's a flaw. It's an overextension of evolution. Intelligence, once a great feature in eons past, continued to grow unchecked and unfiltered, and has since passed a threshold whereupon it is no longer benefit but an act of danger to its host. Much like the Irish elk, a species of deer that through uncountable generations of evolution grew antlers so wide and vast that it could no longer run from predators, eventually leading to extinction. The human mind is an evolutionary maladaption caused by going too far in a direction that was once beneficial and will, sooner or later, 
lead to our extinction. On an individual level, it's already happening. Existential dread is already taking hold. I'm sure you felt it too. The pain and fear of being nothing, becoming nothing. The suffering of understanding that. We are unable to come to terms with it, so we hide from our own intelligence. We set limits. We stop ourselves from thinking deeply about what will happen when we die. We create distractions. We keep our minds busy with mundane activities and entertainment to stop ourselves from having to come face to face with the truth. We sublimate it. We transform our self-reflective suffering into another form, art, to keep it from consuming us. Anything to avoid the panic. But these ways are all simply temporary. They're just there to push back the inevitable veil of helplessness and despair that would encompass and ruin us. In the end, nothing matters. There is no point in trying to find joy in life. For life, in and of itself, is suffering. You're wrong. Huh. You criticize those that consider a vast intelligence a gift, and yet also misguide yourself to believe her meaninglessness is a curse. How could it not be? Nothing we do matters in the end, and that is precisely why we are not shackled by the burden of expectations. Fear of eternal judgment, or the failure to meet up to an arbitrary definition of what makes our limited time not wasted. Time cannot be wasted, for there is no greater purpose in life than simply living it. But still, in that case, the meaninglessness of our actions draws to the same conclusion. There is no reason to act, for any action is simply a temporary fluctuation that will, nevertheless, lead to the same conclusion. Quite the contrary. Because we have no greater purpose, we are free to set our own, to create self-defined goals for which to strive. For some, it may be nothing. For some, it may be pleasure. For some, it may be creation. For some, it may be improving the lives of others. It is because we have no greater purpose that time spent on goals set by oneself cannot be time wasted. In the end, nothing matters, and therefore you have no reason not to do what you want, rather than whatever illusion of greater purpose is forced on you by others, or even your own misguided thoughts. I do understand what you mean. However, that doesn't ease my fear of the end. Even if I were to try to find purpose, I still would be paralyzed by the thought of becoming nothing. And it is a thought worth fearing. However, abandoning a purpose, hope, choice, goals, pleasure, and will cannot make that thought disappear. The fear, however, can subside. Giving up is not accepting the end, it is simply accepting the fear of it. It, embrace, it is embracing despair rather than facing it. I see. Though as much as I'd like to embrace it, I'm nevertheless struck with that paralyzing existential panic. I understand it logically, and I know that there's no reason to live in apathy, but my emotional side refuses to listen. The fear persists, and I cannot motivate myself to seek purpose, despite knowing I must. This is true. Emotional is not controlled by the logical, however, they are interlinked. Just as the deepest, darkest depths of despair can overthrow reason and the logical, warping them to fit into that haze of depression, so too can reason influence and overpower emotion, regardless of how impenetrable its defenses may seem. By continually forcing to subvert those creeping negative thoughts with the positive logical ones, the emotional mind will eventually, slowly, gradually start to shape to fit the logical. It's not an easy job. It's not a quick job. It will sometimes feel like an impossible job. However, it can be done. With an immense amount of time, effort, and energy, it will improve. You can change. You can heal. And during the hardest times when all seems lost and you want to give up, never forget. We will always love you. Hmm. Well, I'll be damned. Guess you got a good head on your shoulders, after all. Hell, I'm impressed. Man, I feel like I've just shed the weight of the world off my back. Or, rather, you've done that for me. Not honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Give me a lot to think about, and while I'm sure I have a long and hard road ahead of me, I'm optimistic. For the first time in what feels like an eternity. I'm optimistic.
Say, we're already way too late for school, and it's become quite clear by now that nobody's gonna come lead us there, so... Why don't you and I ditch that passion-draining penitentiary and go grab something to eat, eh? Yeah, sure, I got nothing better to do today. Uh, you're paying, though. Oh, you sneaky bastard! But alright. I do owe you one anyway, so what better time to cash out your did-a-nice-thing-to-a-girl-way-out-of-my-league coupon than now, eh? <laughs> 